Hey, this is Trevor from Halifax calling in to say that I support creative control on Patreon because I think long form arts journalism is a crucial part of music culture and there's simply not enough of it out there today. Vish is a master interviewer, he lands great guests, and he has his finger on the pulse of the ever-changing music landscape, both here in Canada and abroad. For all of these reasons and many more, I think you should support Creative Control on Patreon too. To make your flexible monthly donation to Creative Control, please visit patreon.com slash creative control today. I'm Vish's wife, and I will love him no matter what you do. And now he has me on the record saying that. Welcome to another episode of Creative Control, featuring not one, but two separate interviews. Members of the band Thrush Hermit and I had a chat just ahead of their London, Ontario show uh, on their 20th anniversary reunion tour behind their 1999 album Clayton Park, which takes them across the Canadian prairies and west coast between October 9th and 15th in the year 2019. And you can hear our conversation in the second half of this show. But first, Shotgun Jimmy is a very gifted musician, witty and heartfelt songwriter, and one of the most entertaining performers anywhere. Currently based in Brandon, Manitoba, you can see him live opening for the aforementioned Western Canadian Swing of Thrush Hermit's Clayton Park Tour, or in select Ontario cities with Jose Contreras between November 13th and 19th. For more info about that, please visit you'vechangedrecords.com. Speaking of which... Jimmy's latest album is Transistor Sister 2, which was released by You've Changed on August 2nd, and he and I had a talk about it and many other things during a bit of spare time we both had at the 2019 edition of Sappy Fest in Sackville, New Brunswick. A part of the E1 Podcast Network with the support of listeners like you who subscribe to this podcast and spread the word about it and make flexible monthly donations at patreon.com slash Control. Plus, in-kind support from CFRU 93.3 FM, Pizza Trocadero, The Bookshelf, and Planet Bean Coffee in Guelph, and Granddad's Donuts in Hamilton. This is the 502nd episode of Creative Control, featuring a Shotgun Jimmy conversation opening for a Thrush Hermit conversation with your host, me, Vish Khanna. Hi, Jim. Hello. I was expecting uh, Shotgun Jimmy is a <laughs> oh, multi-talented. Yeah. Uh, that's talented, right. You know, <laughs> that's you right. Go on, that's an old. I used to yeah, do that. You you're the that. second yeah, person, Steve Lansky. Steve, would, I'm, I'm, now I'm remembering He Steve. said, you're not going to do the intro? And I yeah, said, yeah, oh, yeah. I don't do that anymore. Yeah. I don't do the big flower it's intro. It's disappointing for us because we need that so we can steal that stuff. Like, listen, it's like someone asks you for a bio. Oh, and well, then you I just still go back and listen to the show and go like, oh, yeah, I'm great for all these reasons that Vish said. And then... <laughs> put that into the new bio for the next project but i still do the intro you do yeah i do it in post so like, it we'll makes talk. we have to listen to you have to the, listen to the show yeah. if you need it for your bio yeah yeah, yeah that's if right you so. steal it. Okay. <laughs> we are in a uh, beautiful sunny sackville new brunswick today it's beautiful and sunny it normally is yeah and we're sitting in the shade yes is there not a lot of shade here you said, uh, that, you said that like it was a, a rare well thing. it's a hot day yeah. i don't know i'm just the kind of person that when it's smoking hot and sitting in the sun can be an uncomfortable experience. Oh, you're not alone yeah. there. You're not alone there. Now, you lived in Sackville? I did. For how long, roughly? I, I think of it as about a decade. Yeah. But I did go come and go a little bit in there. Right. 
we established a lot of this stuff the last time you were on the show. The episode number escapes me, but I urge people to <laughs> go back into the archives <laughs> for some, uh, you know, more research. But um, I saw you yesterday, and, you know, you weren't playing yet. You're going to play tonight. But you were, I thought you had the kind of like, wow, I'm in Sackville feeling. Like, yeah, I wow. Did. Like, my, you had a kind of like, I don't want to describe it as um, jittery or anything, but I could just tell you're like, holy shit, I'm, I'm back in yeah. town. Do you get that? Well, yeah, I did last night for sure. I had a perma smile. Like, yes, I was, you had that I, too. I was consciously thinking, okay, I look like an idiot because, like, I'm not talking to anyone. I'm just looking around at everyone smiling. I got it, like, I tried to suck in my cheeks, like when you do that fish face. I was yeah. like, maybe if I, oh God, then I, like because I would. Anyway, so trying was, to stifle the smile. Yeah, yeah. I don't no, want, it made me look good. even worse. Actually, probably <laughs> more suspicious. This is obviously a meaningful place for you. And yeah. How long have you been away though? You we said you've been here. You lived here ten years. And you moved. You're in Brandon, Manitoba, still. Yeah. Okay. How long have you been gone? I guess eight years. Oh wow. Yeah, so yeah. almost as long as you were here. You. Yeah. So, what does this place mean to you to be back here for Sappy Fest? Can you put? Th- I know we talked about the perma smile, but what, mm. are you, what are you feeling? Well, I guess it's th- that time that I was here was a formative time in my life. So I did a lot of figuring out how things work and how people are, and and I met some beautiful people here. So when I come back, the nostalgia is sort of overwhelming and mm. puts me into that perma smile sort of situation. Right. And Sappy Fest is, as you know, is uh, like a family reunion kind of experience where you you're reacquainted with your chosen family and you get uh (laughs) your chosen family yeah not the one you were uh forced into well i actually my brother lives in sackville so i have a little bit Uh, of blood family and then a lot of chosen family here did your brother come here before you did he did he went to school he did his undergrad here at mount allison university Oh, okay did you follow him per se i sort of did i had been out visiting him i was living in toronto at the time and i went to visit him here and it was like today it was a beautiful mm. sunny but cool in the shade Parad- paradisical paradoxical per- no i'm going for like a paradise like <laughs> oh, oh okay type of word. that's a word that i i, I haven't come i don't come know if across. that's it i may have just made it oh, up no it's good paradisical. it's a good one it's probably a, re- a real word we'll, we'll i'll check my email after and I i'm sure re- listeners will mention whether or not that's a real word paradisical popsicle will be on my next album <laughs> It's a song about the best popsicle ever. Like Suddenly Submarine. You're exactly. just going to do alliterative things like that that's on the new album. By the way, great new record. Aw, thanks. Transistor Sister Volume 2? Well, no, it's not called Volume 2, but it's just called Transistor Sister 2. I but thought I saw a Volume 2 somewhere. You did. It's Some of the online people <laughs> wouldn't let Steve call it Transistor Sister 2. Why? I don't know. What do you mean the online people like the sites? Like yeah, the, like iTunes. Said, it, nope, it has to be volume two. That doesn't work with our oh. data system or. But you wanted just the two. We just wanted the two, and we talked about it. And he fought really hard for it, and you know, spent way too much time trying to make it volume Weird. two. Weird. Not just on iTunes, on all, across all those platforms, they all didn't like that idea. And he even found examples of, t- like, albums with numbers in the title. Yeah. But. They wanted it to be volume two. Okay, well, that's a whole other... I did not know that. Yeah. I, so you're already disappointed. <laughs> yeah, it's the worst worst album ever, but the whole thing's been a terrible experience, and I just... Yeah, regret. Nothing but regret over now, here. Now, you, you talked about the nostalgia that uh, washes over you a little bit by being here. You made a sequel to a record. How are the two records connected? Um, does that... Because I feel like there's a, an interplay between them... Like there's even musically the song Swamp Magic appears again uh, in a way. It's an interpolation of your own song Mm -hmm. appears on a song on the new album. Which song is it? It's escaping me. I think it's called Tumbleweed. Tumbleweed. Yes. Towards the end, you break into the riff, uh, if you will. From So there's something reflective going on anytime you make a sequel or you you, you contextualize something. Because you could have called it anything, really. Mm -hmm. But you wanted to connect these two records. What's the connection, I guess, is my question. Well, largely it's just the personnel, which is not a super exciting answer, but the, the same players that played on the first one play on the second oh. one, uh, Jason Barrett and Ryan Peters, and a lot of the the, re- the reason why I wanted to make 
the second one was because I wanted to work with those guys. So it's really just the people that were involved. It is. I did. I did write to that idea a little bit, like, and f- sort of finished some of the songs, thinking about making connections to the first one, and like, I didn't want to try to recreate it, or, or I didn't want to prevent us from doing something new because we were looking too hard at something old. Right. Um, but I thought it was good to be aware of the first one while we're making that one, and I thought I hoped at least that just b- being aware of what sort of approach was taken with the first one would uh, color the way that we okay. made this one a little bit. Okay. That's interesting. And it kind of worked out. Okay. So thematically they're not, hmm, that's fascinating. I just wonder why I'm still trying to puzzle over. Did you consider a prequel? Oh yeah, exactly. No, but that's a great idea. What if you had done a, a prequel to Transistor Sister? It's How? never too late. <laughs> I mean, we've been talking about Transistor Sister 3 all weekend okay. while we've been preparing for the big, big show tonight. And, uh, wouldn't it be interesting if there was a Transistor Sister prequel? Yeah, I think that's. A I good think idea. it's going to happen <laughs> now. I mean, Transistor Sister Two is just a suggestion from Steve. Oh. You know, we were talking. And he was like, "What's next for you?" And I was like, "I don't know." And then. You but know, you you assembled the band thinking, you know, ah, it's the same crew from that. Yeah. How many records have you made? So Transistor Sister is twenty eleven. I want to say. Something yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And then there's Field of Trampolines. Is there something? No, there was Everything Everything. Oh. And right. then Field of Trampolines. Right. And yeah. then now we're at volume two. So you made yeah. two other records with different people. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So are you feeling reflective though? You've since we've last spoken, you've become a dad? Yeah. What's going on there? That's right. good. It's just it's, <laughs> it's been perfect so far. I love it. The guy today he turned fourteen months. Oh wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Does that inform songs on this record? It does a little bit. Yeah, it does a little bit. That works in there. I don't sing about him, but it certainly has changed my view of everything. So You were saying that S- Sackville was a formative experience for you. You met people, and you said something interesting about how it, it's something along the lines of, like, it shaped the way you think a little bit yeah. about people and, and the world. I have found uh, becoming a dad does the same thing, sure, if not, sure. I mean, to an, a, a ridiculous degree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, profound experience for you like has it changed the way you view the world yeah definitely and I usually end up writing about experiences like I write biographically and I usually am looking at stuff sort of 10 years later so I'll be maybe this this situation with becoming a father is going to pay play more of a part in the art making later oh and now it usually takes me quite a while to sort of digest it properly and then and because I do write from a sort of nostalgic place a lot then ten, about 10 years later then I'm thinking about sort of longingly of something or romantically of something that happened already and then huh. sort of that and that's something that I haven't done consciously but something that I've a- identified uh, in my oeuvre <laughs> as it were you know you sort of look at it and you're like oh, I have this consistent timeline of why is that why do you think you take it takes you literally 10 years to process something Ish or f- like this one, like a lot of the songs are about stuff that happened six years ago. Sure, actually. well, sure, but I so. mean, I think everyone's different. Everyone thinks about things in a different way uh, and processes things in their own way. But you've identified something about yourself. Do you have a sense of where that comes from? You know, like no, what? yeah, not specifically. I mean, I'll spend more time now that we've had this conversation, maybe <laughs> thinking about it a little more clearly, but this is the first time I've kind of articulated that out loud. Well, it's I mean, something that I thought about, Oh, I'm a notice that I'm doing. Well, you've conflated two things. One is that it takes you a while to process something, but then you often, you also say I'm a generally a nostalgic person. Yeah. Yeah. So you got a time thing going on. Yeah. Yeah. Do you not feel of the now? Exactly. No, I'm, I don't think I am of the now, but mm-hmm. I think that's okay. I'm pretty comfortable with that at this point. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It has nothing. Does this have a bearing on your life beyond being a musician, an artist? Like, are you still using a flip phone? Are you. No, you're not. You got an no. iPhone there. I see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> are you a Luddite in some ways? Like, I know you're on social media uh, a little bit. Are you begrudgingly on social media? Yeah. I don't really like doing it. Yeah. I'm sick of it. It yeah, I know make me everybody feel good. is. You know what? I've been, t- I've had so this same conversation with so many people. Mm. It's, it's something that we're all dealing with, and it's good. I think it's exciting. I think actually talking about it is important. You know, yeah. some people, like uh, John K. Sampson, has 
on his guitar it just says unplug like written in duct tape or something on right. his electric guitar right he's saying like get off there yeah you know? oh he's, he's saying like, that about our internet world yeah and he doesn't uh he doesn't receive emails like if he you have to write him like on his website it says like i don't do email anymore here's my mailing address oh thank you i'll write you back if you write me yeah he thing. doesn't i think i texted him not too long ago and he didn't ah oh, no it's been a few years but yeah he didn't respond yeah. i thought it was surprising because he normally would respond right yeah. away no huh. he so he's like thinking real hard about all of that stuff and i have a bunch of other friends that are having that same uh conundrum and yeah i'm i'm feeling pretty dissatisfied with how much i'm doing it right now which isn't very much right for a while i was doing social media sunday which is a thing that i designed to minimize it where i would only check in on stuff on sundays sunday's supposed to be the day of rest i know but well i'm a heathen (laughs) that's when i go do the (laughs) dirty social media respond to people's messages huh do click the appropriate icons and then put it down you know, you, I think you and I are around the same age. Yeah. And, and when you said nostalgia, it made me think about some of the things I do with this show mm-hmm. and maybe what the perception of this show is sometimes because the things that seem to get the my audience, because I think my audience is similar to me too, the things that get them really excited are when I interview David Berman, yeah. Stephen Malcolmus, people who arguably made a lot of their, most of their work that, that, you know unfortunately for them you know when they're remembered uh when they're gone when they're remembered people will likely point to this decade of the 90s yeah primarily as being like holy lord what a what a massive amount of output that was so sometimes i'm wary of like am i making a nostalgic show are you ever self-conscious about your nostalgia i guess is my question for you because i worry about that but then i also know i am talking to lots i talk i'm talking to you i talk to people who are making music now i talk to people mm-hmm. who are younger and yeah, uh, yeah. interesting to me but are you ever self-conscious about your nostalgia i think your- i was when i think i was when i was just more self-conscious about everything you know because i knew that uh like it wasn't uh popular to be nostalgic like i sort of thought nostal- of nostalgia as a bit of a dirty word in terms of art making and you know just because it's not progressive and it's not really I mean, uh, it's not causing you to ponder social justice issues or, you know, it doesn't dig deep into anything necessarily. I think that uh, for a while I thought that maybe it wasn't uh, as powerful of a of an area of interest as as other other things could be. Yeah. And as stirring or something, maybe. But I'm not I'm not as concerned about what other people think as I as I was like 10 years ago or something. Okay. Now I'm sort of like, I like doing this and I like doing it with these people. And, and, uh, we're not, we're not trying to do anything more than what we're doing. We're just doing this right now. And mm. were you clamoring for success in, a, in a, some ways more? Yeah. Yeah. I ago? think so for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then, but now I, f- I feel sick, like I'm already successful and I don't need any more of that. Yeah. Than I already have. So, it's just freeing and I feel like there's a corollary with social media too because all of that most of social media stuff is external likes like people liking or following and it's all like external and when you unplug Mm -hmm. for a while like you had social media Sunday and I'm trying to slowly stop using some of the things as much it's hard when we do what we do I think sometimes Mm -hmm. because that's the way people find out about stuff we do but I feel much better about myself when I'm not worried about what other people think. Mm-hmm. At the same time, you don't want to be a, a misanthrope. You want you you want to function in civilized society for crying out loud. Mm-hmm. So you got to be mindful of <laughs> I know, social I know. norms. But you have yeah. a song on your new record that has intrigued me, um, and I'm not exactly sure what's going on within it. But it's called the new sincerity, mm. and I don't know why. Like you just said, you were kind of hinting at the fact that maybe my music is apolitical. Mm-hmm. There's something about the new sincerity as a term that even made me, it just perked my ears up. I'm like, is Jim kind of talking about what's going on right now? Are you? Yeah, with that one, I am. That one, I'm looking at the post postmodernism kind yeah. of just being tired of irony or, yeah, and just, yeah, just feeling like that there's, there is this sort of positive 
I know that it's not cool to be have a perma smile at a happy fest, but <laughs> at a certain point, you just gotta own it, you know. And oh, I see. So it's more of a, a comment on people who use irony and detachment from feeling. Um, yeah. On some level, but you were trying to address that in your own way. Do you feel like yeah. you do that? You did that before. No, I don't know if I was guilty of it, and I don't, and I don't feel like I don't think of that song as much as a as a song that's a criticism of or a critique. I think of it more as a manifesto. Okay. Yeah, so it's. <laughs> Should I be that, calling the authorities <laughs> right now? <laughs> exactly. No, it's more of like it is a call to arms or something, but the arms are not. They're nonviolent. Okay. You know, they're sincere and they're sensitive. Yeah, well, I feel like when you you have employed humor and a lot of humor in your music and, like, it's witty and all that stuff. And when I hear... But there's also, like, very heartfelt songs um, about particular... Like, there's a song called Sappy Slogans on this record. Um, you've sung, when I think of Swamp Magic, like, that's like a community. Like, community is super important to you. Emotion is very important to you as well. Mm-hmm. But Shotgun Jimmy... People, I think, think of this fun-loving guy that doesn't take things too seriously, but you do. Mm-hmm. I do, th- I do, and I think there is ma- there's more of that on this on this record than maybe on the last couple. Okay. There's just yeah, but and that could be the fatherhood thing too. But you're not sure. It'll take you ten years. Yeah, to like out. I'll get back to you on that <laughs> when we when we're talk when I'm on the show to talk about the prequel. <laughs> <laughs> Are there themes on this record that you would want to highlight? I know it's up to us to kind of process well, interpret. I've mentioned a couple of songs here, but mm-hmm. are there things that you've become because you're processing it as much as we are now that it's out, I assume. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Is there, there is something that, can you speak to that? I know that in the very brief moments where I've uh, or, or instances where I've put out a record or or uh, or an article. Sometimes I write an article, or or put an episode out, or whatever I put out. It's not until it's out out into the world that I'm like, oh, huh, made me think of something that I could have done to it. Oh yeah, and yeah. It's almost too late. Do you have that? Like, are you still processing what this record's about? Uh, I. Get- yeah, maybe I'm making connection. Like, I'm not thinking about changing it or how it could be sure. different, but I think I am maybe drawing some connections uh, with it and like other things yeah. in my life yeah. or other music that I've made or something. Your question, sort of like about themes that I would want to highlight, makes me think about. I do have a song that is about social media on oh. the album, ish. There's a song, uh, I. I think it's the second last song. It's called Jack Pine. Yeah. And I'm singing about, like, blatantly singing about, I say cars are moving faster today on the information highway. Yeah, that's it's right. It's like so jokey <laughs> and, like, right. dumb or whatever. But but also then later on in the next part, I the next verse, I, t- I talk about hearts breaking faster on the glowing written page. Uh-huh. And this is, I made up this term that I'm kind of excited about. I know it's probably not as awesome as I think it is, but I think it's a cool name for the inter, for the internet. Or Glowing for, written page. Yeah. Hmm, that's You good. know, because people used to call uh, literary stuff the written page or whatever. Right, right, right. But it's yeah. the glowing written page. Yeah, and then I talk about how it's hard to turn away from it. And so I'm like really talking about what you're asking huh. me about how comfortable I am with that stuff and what it's doing to us or or what it can do, that, yeah. that kind of thing. But that's not, an, uh, that does appear in a couple other places on the album, but I don't think that it's uh, the thing that the album's about. No, and I don't know that there is a specific thing. Again, like, it's interesting that it's been contextualized as a sequel. You've already kind of downplayed that, <laughs> the fact that it's a sequel per se. Mm-hmm. But I, I do want to, I, I mean, one of my favorite songs that you've maybe ever written if I may, is Cool All the Time. Oh, yeah. Which features Chad Van Galen. What inspired that song, first of all? My kids love that song, and they're trying to figure, because at one point it's you who wants to be cool all the time or wishes you were. The narrator narrator says, Mm. first person, 
then there's other verses where it's I wish he or she would be cool all the time. Mm-hmm. There seem to be some stories going on on that song. And then there's this whole spoken word spiel by Chad, which is amazing. Kind of goes into global warming. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so then it comes to climate change yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. What's going on on that song, if I may? Um, well, it's pretty. Stra- it's a pretty straight ahead narrative. Um, I was thinking about it. Like mostly it is about me. But then it's sort of realizing that everybody has this struggle. Mm. And the, the thing about that you, you, your listeners should know is I'm not talking about the popularity kind of cool. I'm talking about the staying cool. Keeping like, calm? Keep, yeah, the calm. Yeah. And like and part for me, the idea of being cool is being respectful too. like And aware, just aware, taking the temperature of the room yeah. and being cool. Right, right. Yeah. So it's literally... <laughs> The social temperature yeah. is what you were taking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, explain Chad's role in all this, because I mentioned the spiel. He also does uh, really amazing backup vocals on the choruses. Yeah. Uh, how did you hook up with Chad? Well, I've known Chad for th- for this specific idea, or how do I know him? Our, Both, I suppose. Yeah, well, we're just friends, and we've met through um, our mutual friend, Paul Henderson, who is a sappy fest guy. Not anymore, but w- one of He's the guys here. who started it. Weren't we on the... He, we, and he did the album art for Transistor Sister 1 and Transistor Sister 2. Now, I, I will say, as a, an aside here, I was walking down Bridge Street earlier this morning after doing something, or maybe mid-late morning, and Paul Henderson was mm-hmm. on the sidewalk, and he had a iPhone, cell phone, on the ground. Yeah. And as I was walking by, he's like, Vish, Vish, come here. And it said on the phone, Shotgun Jim. Like that's oh yeah you were talking he was talking to you oh yeah and then he made me come and clap oh nice and apparently we were on your radio show yeah this I was morning? doing a an episode of Good Morning Duders on CHMA which is a, a radio show that I had about twenty years ago here right. in Sackville you're doing a special guest slot yeah with Jason Baird who I plays see. bass on the record who's in town with me so, so Jay and I used to live here together and we had that radio show so we were on. Paul made me be on your show today? Yeah, you were on my show. And now look, here the tables have turned. <laughs> now I'm on your show. You want me to clap? Slow clap? Please, no, please don't. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I know Paul and Chad have a, an old relationship. So you knew Chad through Paul. Yeah, and, and then we've just become friends. And Chad and I were playing at a festival, uh, River and Sky, amazing festival in uh, Field, Ontario. Right. And last summer, and I was telling Chad about Transistor Sister 2, and he said, when you're done tracking it, send me, send it to me and I'll record something on it. Oh, yeah. Anything. Just that casual. Yeah. So then I sent him the whole record and he picked that song and he picked that moment to do that thing and just added all those parts. And So on the, when people hear the song, there's a, there are verses and choruses and then there's just this extended, you're, what are you doing while he's singing? I'm singing... I'm singing, why, why? <laughs> Not laughing, I'm laughing now because I'm singing without it. But it's either. a very, uh, uh, I don't know, pained why. Yeah, and there's also the saxophone. There's a saxophone that's matching the same pitch as me and uh-huh. slowly bending up and down on the pitches, so it does sound painful. Yeah, yeah it's for a sure. little bit of a painful thing. And so then, uh, so when you sent him the record, what was there? Nothing? The saxophone and the yelling was. But And so Chad... <laughs> Took that as his opportunity to do a. He was thinking of Chuck D. Oh, in cool cool thing. thing. (laughs) So it's like cool all the time, cool thing. And as soon as he told me that, then I regretted not calling it cool all the time with a K, like cool thing. But he said he's like, I don't know what you're gonna think. It's kind of a nod to Chuck D. (laughs) I hear more Vincent Price. Oh my God, that's amazing because he kind of distorts his voice like Chuck's actually. Yeah, now that yeah. I think about it, yeah, oh he was, my he was God. channeling Chuck D there. That's amazing. He's like, that's not good enough, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what does the Chuck D say again? Hit him where it hurts. He says a whole bunch of stuff uh, in that spiel. I can't remember yeah, yeah. off the top of my head. Wow. Okay. So that's that's amazing in itself. I I enjoy this record very much. Uh, <laughs> is there anything else you want to say about it per se? I mean, you know, the I just the thing that I was thinking about the whole time was the experience of making it. That is that is the theme for me hmm. and not what it would end up being. Where did you make it? How did you make it? I made it in Toronto with Jose Contreras, who I have another side project with called The Heat Death. That I'm are familiar also with this. Yeah. yeah. And um, Are you guys playing here? 
The Heat Death playing on Sunday night. Oh, I didn't. First ever show. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's gonna be good. Who is it? You, Jose? Just Jose and I. Okay. We have a we have a system figured out. Yeah. I uh, don't want to go on another tangent yeah, on yeah. the side, but I don't know when it was. It's a couple of years ago, maybe a year ago, you asked me to participate in a music video. Oh yeah, of course you know about the Heat Death. You're in the <laughs> the three singles video. <laughs> so you said, could you be in this video? And you're going to be the talk show host. Yeah. And so I go there to the where were we? And like outside of Hamilton. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh no, we haven't talked about this. No, we yet. haven't talked about this. <laughs> okay. So I go there and I get into my suit and then yeah. you make the the video and I'm participating in the video and I'm acting. Yeah. In a ways that I've never acted. Then the video comes, and then like months, years later, I don't know when it was, the video comes out, and I'm watching it, and I'm like hitting my screen, like I'm trying to, why am I cut off? Like all of us are kind of cut off. It's not filmed in a way, or not presented in a way that's easy to, to consume. And I thought my phone was broken, and then I thought my computer was broken. Did I did I do something wrong? Did you try to cut me out of this video? No, we were all cut out of it. The, the so whole- why why is it so weird? Well, with the heat death, we were Jose and I are always think we're always we were rea- reacting to uh, the immediacy of mo- the modern day, where everyone is just used to getting exactly what they want when they want it. So our first single from the record was a slow motion six minute video of us singing to a really slow song. In sl- and the whole thing's in slow motion it's yeah. bl- and black and white. Right. So you got to be pretty dedicated to make it through it. And then for the next one, we decided that we would do three songs all in one YouTube video so that if you wanted, if you heard the second song and you really liked it, you would have to either listen to the whole first one again or you would have to skip ahead or you got to like kind of work at it. Yeah. So we're, and then we, ed- when we were editing it, we had this idea to, to, to <laughs> obscure it so you can't really see what you're l- uh-huh. looking at now. So I can only blame art for you driving all the way to Dundas and it was, spending a whole day in that hot gymnasium with us. I got a box of Granddad's Donuts while I was in Hamilton. I was actually pretty content. Okay. But I was just baffled by what the... I was like... I honestly was like, what did my... I almost called my phone provider. Oh, yeah. I think my phone's busted. This video is not showing up the way it's supposed to. I think that it looks really nice that way. Like, I like... What? I know that it's confusing, and I like that about it, too. But I think that watching a rock band play and not getting to see their heads or their faces just seeing their bodies well because that's essentially this video is zoomed in to like a small portion of the screen so you see Vish's hands moving around and stuff but you don't see his beautiful (laughs) face so it's like suit and my beautiful suit so you see you do I mean it is it's in, it's, it was intentional. It wasn't okay. an accident. All right. All right. No, and you know what? In hindsight, maybe we should have given you a heads up. No, no. I mean, I barely had a head in it. I, I didn't know <laughs> a heads up was not even there. It's above yeah. the screen. That's the heads up. So what for people who want to know what we're talking about, what's the name of the song on the YouTube? I think it's called Three Singles from the Heat Death. From the Heat Death. Okay. Yeah. So if people want to know what we're talking about, go find them. Anyway, you go and make the record, uh, this record in Toronto with Jose. And your friends. Bring the friends in. And then at the end of the session, even though it's a bad idea, we went and played a rock show at the Transac in the front room. Why is it a bad idea? Well, because it's the final day of the studio. So you've like paid for studio time. Oh. Typically on the last day, you might go late because you have to finish the last few things or whatever. And it just puts all this pressure on that last day because, you know, at five o'clock, we got to go load in for a rock show. Right. So yeah, it added a bunch of pressure, but we were aware of that like months in advance that that's what was going to happen. But I had this idea that doing doing something really memorable with the recording was go- was going to be the thing that I'll, I'll look back at in ten years and want to write songs about <laughs> <laughs> for Transistor Sister. The camaraderie. Three. You like yeah. the camaraderie? Were you thing. at that show? At the Transac? No. I don't yeah. think I was. I made it actually. Okay. Yeah. You know, I live an hour away. And I know, but it was an epic show. Oh, I'm it was sorry. really incredible. Anyway. I wish and I like so ma- so many people the front room is small it's tiny and we had friends from all over that just happened to be in town that day oh. so people from the east coast and from uh, America and yeah oh, and shoot. Winnipeg went to like I'm sorry I fellows that. and oh, okay. her, ba- her band and all those guys were there and oh they played the burdock or something I talked around to, like I, the next day they right. were playing the burdock 
This was in November. Right, right. I saw them in Guelph, but no, I'm sorry, I missed you. That's okay. Okay, okay. So, so the camaraderie sticks with you, and that's what you're taking away from this record. Yeah. Do you have messages for people as they listen? We've talked about social media. Is there any? Oh, did we talk about sappy slogans? By the way, we didn't. What is going on on that song? Well, that one, it seem on the surface, it seems like it's about Sappy Fest, but it's not. It's it's I'm referencing a weaker than song from their first record, where John sings Sappy slogans all come true, and that predates Sappy Fest. Oh right, okay. I'm having that, and then I, and I have this personal relationship with Sappy Fest and their slogans because I named my song Swamp Magic after their slogan Swamp Magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so that connection is sort of profound for me. And then that song is actually about my experience with undergrad. And it's a song that I wrote for John because he has, on his last two solo records, records he has a song uh, about master's thesis called When I Write My Master's Thesis, yeah, right. which is really about <laughs> when I paint my masterpiece right. by Dylan, no, by the band. Dylan and the band. Dylan and the band. So then, and then he has one on his most recent record called Postdoc Blues, which is kind of a Neil Young nod uh, because of like Vampire Blues or, well, nobody has Alberta. Anyways, (laughs) so then I was, I was wanted to write a song for John because this other thing that I do that I'm sure is I write songs for people. I have a song for Attack and Black and for the Constantines and Oh, you write songs about people. I write songs, well, I write them about them, but I also think of them as songs that... uh, I'm writing for the person. Sorry, but just to distinguish between for them to sing and for them. As oh, a they're not for them to sing. Right, no, no, yeah, right, right, right. Very, very true. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I only write songs for me to sing. <laughs> yes. So you've written a song for John? I just wrote it for John. as, And then, like, I, you know, when I fish the record, I go, like, hey, man, I wrote this song for you. Like, oh, send nice. it to him or whatever. And then... So it's... I'm thinking about him... Uh, or I was thinking about him when I wrote all of the words and the music for that song. <laughs> So you are, and you played with John and his solo band, right? Yep. So you've become, uh, there's something going on with you, Jim. You come to Sackville from Toronto and a community rallies around you. And now I feel like you've gone to Manitoba and something similar has happened. Like you, you are really about connecting with people and they like connecting with you. I think that's a nice testament to you. I'm a just super lucky guy. Yeah, I'm a good, good person good people magnet or you something are. like that no, I think it's you good are. it's yeah. really good and that's why I have Chad on my record and yeah that's why Joel Plaskett produced my last one right. and I'm in a project with the guy from by divine right and your yeah. nostalgic dreams are coming true they are by the way touring opening for thrush hermit in October I saw that ac- around across the west coast yeah, or west so, uh, the prairies rather sorry so for a guy who likes nostalgia being on the Clayton Park uh, album reunion tour is going to be seeing them play that every night is going to be incredible I almost want to come with you you should like if you give me something to do I will just come with you and watch every show every night just yeah like well I'm in a minivan just cruising across <laughs> the prairies by myself <laughs> give me something to do I'll do it I want to do that because I want to I missed their last reunion tour because I was in Newfoundland or something and oh, yeah. I couldn't get to see it which was in it must have been 2009 I think they seem to get together every couple every 10 years yeah um so anyway, yeah, I'm planning to see them as well. Um, I did want to say you're in Manitoba. You're making music. You mentioned you made your, your record here in, in Ontario, or rather in Toronto. Forget we're not in Ontario sometimes. Um, what else are you doing in Manitoba? Like, are you you got you're a dad? Are you doing anything else? I'm ma- I'm making art. I'm making art and making music. Like even though I am, I have a record that just came out yesterday. I'm working on the next one and the prequel. The prequel, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not necessarily the prequel. I'm sorry. I, I like the idea. <laughs> but you are making a new record already. I'm not making it already, but oh. I'm writing. I'm always writing and, and uh, yeah, just making stuff and, and thinking about art. And When you say art, what do you mean? I like think beyond I mean this? it all. I think oh, okay. I mean it all. But beyond, I know you as a, we know you as a singer and a songwriter. Mm-hmm. That's part of your art. Can you talk about other mediums or other... Yeah, I, d- I just finished a painting degree. Okay. Uh, like a, the un- so the song about undergrad on the record is because th- I did a BFA and just finished it last year. Congratulations. Thanks. And I made a lot of ceramic art, even though it was a painting honors degree. Uh, so I want to make some paintings now. And Oh, cool. Yeah, and I'm always making collages and watercolors and watercolor paintings. And yeah, I'm just... 
guy who likes to make stuff and think about the things that are around by making them. Okay. By making stuff. <laughs> Any chance you're leaving Manitoba? No, not no pl- no current plans. Okay. No. You're good there. Like the oceans are rising. I feel weird being out in the Maritimes. As Chad oh, yeah. says on Cool All the Time, the oceans yeah. are heating up. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like you're in the middle there. You're probably pretty good. It's a safe place. <laughs> it's a safe place. With a view, it's good. You can see miles around, all, miles in all directions. How far is Brandon from Winnipeg? Two and a half hours. Okay. Yeah. Do you get up to Winnipeg much? Yeah, we go pretty often. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I uh, I thank you for talking to me about stuff. Do you have anything else you want to say? No, I think that covers it all. That covers everything? We've, co- yeah. we've covered everything? we've covered everything. You feeling good? I'm feeling great. Tonight, okay. t- the other thing that I, sh- I should mention is that tonight I'm about to play on the main stage at Sappy Fest in Sackville, New Brunswick, <laughs> so I'm feeling pretty excited and pretty good right now. smile is on your face right yeah, now. Yeah, I know. You came back, just as you said. That's I exciting. Know. I can't wait to see you As soon you as play. I really think <laughs> about it, I'm, I can't believe it's going to happen, and I know it's going to be so cool. It's going to be great. It's yeah. going to be great. So where can people, I know we talked about how you're not on all of the stuff or try not to be on all of the internet stuff, but if people want to learn more about you, where would you send them? Oh. Do they have to write you a letter like John K. Samson? No, I don't want that either. <laughs> That's even more work than the other <laughs> stuff. It's true. I was supposed to write someone a letter, and it took me a, a year to write them back. I forgot to do it. I think you can find it. Just go to look. Just buy wasn't my buy a, my new album. <laughs> wasn't there another Shotgun Jimmy at one point? Uh, there was. I I let my website you mean oh another person or another I thought there was someone who had your website or something we talked about this last time yeah there was a person who had my was trying to sell me my website oh, back yeah, right. to me because I let it expire and then and then I had some fans that were, were, thought they would do me a favor and try and buy it from this guy but then that just gave made him think that it's even worth more oh, than it is okay. and I wrote him a very sincere email saying listen man I work really hard at this and you're making it harder for me because you're trying to sell me something that I don't want, but you're confusing everybody because he right. kept the thing isn't he wasn't just trying to sell me shotgunjimmy.com. He was also keeping it up and putting stuff up there that looked like I was saying, like about skinny jeans and stuff. Oh, weird. So I'd go to do an interview with someone nice like you and then they would say, <laughs> So what's with the obsession about skinny jeans? And and for a while I didn't know wh- what anyone was talking about or Weird. why it was happening. And and then I and we, the guy re- responded to me when I was really sincere and I was saying like you're making this ha- hard and I'm an artist and you. And then he wrote back and he's like, I'm sorry, I'll take down all the posts oh. if you want to buy it from me. This is the price kind of thing. And okay. Like, Did you get it back? No, I never. Bu- I oh. just I got shotgunjimmy.net. Okay, right. That's what it is. I got it out of you. I, yeah, I wanted yeah. I wanted to send people to a thing. I'm just obsessed with it by the end of the interview. I okay. Need, I need so I need to send people to to your stuff so that they get it. Yeah. Because I feel better when people say, "Oh, I didn't know about Shotgun Jimmy. I checked him out because of your show. Bought all his records. Yeah. And now he's living the high life. Oh yeah. Thanks, Vish. Like <laughs> I like that's what I want. Oh, so, I want that too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, w w no h t p slash semicolon at w shotgunjimmy.com. dot net. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if we can go out on a song with your permission from Transistor Sister Two. Yeah. What would you pick? I would choose your all time favorite <laughs> Shotgun Jimmy song because we've talked about it so much. Our your listeners are gonna want to hear it. It's really good. Uh, I enjoy it. Do you like oh, it? I love it. Okay. I do love it. Like, is it one of your favorites? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. I get, we're going to play it tonight. Now, who's yeah. going to do Chad's part? Nobody. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's He's just going to go, go, why, 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 why? <laughs> <laughs> all right, this is Cool All the Time by Shotgun Jimmy featuring Chad Van Gillen from Transistor Sister 2. Not and volume. featuring Stephen Lampke oh. on the keyboard at the beginning. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, yeah that plays. weird drum roll thing with yeah. the bum, bum. And Cole Woods of Human Music from Winnipeg oh. playing a synthesizer on there at the oh, beginning. Oh, there's more guests than I even knew about. Yeah, that one's it's a real f- featuring track, guest okay. track, okay. all-star cast. <laughs> cool all the time. Shotgun Jimmy. Jimmy, thank you for being back on the show. Ah. I hope this was fun. And it was we'll, super fun. We'll Thanks talk for having to you. me. We'll talk to you again soon, I hope. Okay, let's do it. 25, 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. When we process this interview. I want to be cool all the time and never ever not be cool. I want to be cool all the time. Can it be?
Things are really heating up these days. The planet Earth is feeling hotter and hotter. The oceans are heating up. People's minds are boiling hot. So you might feel like losing your patience and only being cool part of the time. Or maybe three quarters of the time. Well, that's just not good enough, Jim. I need you to be on this whole time, okay? I need you to be cool all the time. I get so tired of making mistakes. Here I go, my foot is in my mouth again. I have become my own worst enemy. If I were cool, maybe I could be my best friend. And then I'd be cool all the time. Rush Hermit is one of the best Canadian rock bands of all time. Comprised of Halifax citizens Rob Benvy, Cliff Gibb, Ian McGettigan, and Joel Plaskett, Thrush Hermit released some excellent music in the mid to late 90s, including their swan song, Clayton Park, which was released in their last year of existence, 1999. The band got back together for a well-received reunion tour about nine years ago, and to mark the 20th anniversary of Clayton Park, they pressed a double vinyl and scheduled a tour right across Canada, which, as I speak to you, includes stops in Winnipeg, Saskatoon, Edmonton, Calgary, Vancouver, and Victoria between October 9th and 15th. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, Shotgun Jimmy is opening all of those dates. A couple of hours before their truly excellent show at the Music Hall in London, Ontario, Ian McGettigan and Joel Plaskett made time to talk with me about Thresh Hermit's past, present, and future. So please enjoy this conversation with one of my all time favorite bands, Thrush Hermit on Creative Control. Ian McGettigan, can you yeah. hear me? I can't hear you, but yes, I can hear you. What do you, you mean you can't hear me? I'm right here. <laughs> nice to see you. I'm Ian. not in your headphones. Yes, nice to see you. Yeah, it's, it's good to see you. It's been too long. And, and Joel Plaskett, are you here? I'm here, Vish. It's nice. Here to with you. <laughs> for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to see you guys. And uh, I know you just got in from Auto. We're in London, Ontario. Yes. The last time I saw Thresher in London was at the Embassy Club. Yes. Classic. Burned down. Um, <laughs> That's right. With the Super Friends. Okay. Champagne Cadillacs, Cadillacs. I think, is what the poster oh, for that. Oh, that was what my mom, my t-shirt my mom was wearing last night. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. nice. Classic, classic tour. So <laughs> how how is this tour going? This is Great. the 2019 edition of Thresh Hermit. Fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's been really good. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, it's been great so far. Now, I uh, want to get something else out of the way real quick, because I've done this on the show before. I've had to do some forensic analysis of myself. Okay. I told Ian Blurton once that he was the first person I ever interviewed, and I was wrong. He's not the first person I ever interviewed. He's the first person I interviewed and wrote an article about it. But McGettigan, I figured out... That you are the absolute, oh, you and Charles oh, Austin oh. are the first people I ever that put a tape recorder in front of. That's really funny. I don't mean to keep going down memory lane, but it's no, going to be man, this kind of great. thing. That's great. That's fantastic. Exclaim Magazine fifth anniversary party at the Masonic Temple. Wow. The fifth anniversary of Exclaim Magazine. Yeah. Jeez yeah. Louise. You guys played. Yeah. I remember that show. Local yeah. Rabbits played. Yeah. Matt Murphy and he had a, he has lost his voice. Remember the Super Friends played? Right. Is this coming to you at all? It is actually. Yes. So I yes. just want to say, yeah. Magets. There's oh, photos yeah. from that show. Absolutely. I've got photos there with the Exclaim logo in the back. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, uh, Zampano might have played. Oh like yeah, yeah. Now it's making sense to me. Yeah. Now I remember this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, you and I 
and Charles Austin, first people ever. I just want to put that on the I record. I love that, man. Thank you. I, I, this, you yeah. are the reason I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> You got him started, again. <laughs> oh, my God. That's funny. Now, we all kind of know that Joel's been busy playing mm-hmm. music. Uh, Ian, what have you been up to before this reunion? I work in film and TV. Right. Yeah, I, uh, I do a lot of music movies sometimes, you know. I did a movie called Blaze a couple years ago. It was kind of a country music movie. So I try to incorporate that still. You're but in it too, right? I'm in it, actually. <laughs> you have an I, acting role? That's correct, yeah. What was the name of your character? I'm the, I'm the sound <laughs> recorder. But I say, hey, Blaze, you're done. <laughs> actually, you know what? I've Anyway, yeah, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it not, sounded really good saying that line. I believe it. <laughs> hey, Blaze, you're done. Yeah. Now, are you still in Canada? Yeah. Okay, I know you travel a little yeah. bit for your job. Okay, well, it's really nice yeah. to see you. Yeah, man, nice to see but you. But are you doing, are you playing music as much? Uh, you know, I'm uh, leading up to this, playing along to the YouTube videos of the Thresher, it was probably the first playing I did in a long time, so it was kind of, uh, it was fun to do it. You had to play to the YouTube video version? That's right, buddy, the YouTube video. videos. I was on the YouTube last night. <laughs> uh, you don't have a physical copy you could play somewhere? Well, I, you know, I was at my studio, and that was the, I was literally looking at it on I YouTube. Hey, man, thing. every stream counts, Vish. No, it does. <laughs> Yeah, that helps you, doesn't it? Okay. All right. Now, Joel, you are always busy. You're always playing. Uh, what's it like to be back with the Thresh Fun. People? Really fun. I've been working on uh, some new music of my own record, and so this is a really nice uh, departure from that to sort of stop thinking about new stuff and go play these songs that go back a long way. But more for me, like uh, the music is fun. We're playing great. Um, but the social aspect of it's really great, too. Like You guys grew up together, didn't we you? We did, yes. The four of us haven't been in a room together since our last reunion tour uh, you know we'd all seen each other individually and all right, but, but yeah. the four of us hadn't actually hung out since we finished the last uh in 2010 we did a we did a reunion this was it 2010 right. i thought it was 2009 for some reason i don't know Might yeah, have been no, nine, or 2009. Think, nine or ten well, i think it's every 10 years there's like so a right. threshold it it's like a, a comet you guys are like a comet every 10 <laughs> years you show up <laughs> you so 90 99 thrush, thrush comet <laughs> <laughs> 99 I like that you band, Thrush Comet. <laughs> <laughs> really good. By the way, my uh, son, Levon, uh, loves your band. However, for a while there, he thought your name was Fresh Sherman. Yeah, it's better. <laughs> he kept asking so me to many. play Fresh Sherman. I didn't know what he was talking our, about. Our be- uh, the, be- the best mistake on our band name ever was we were on a bill like in Baltimore or Philly or Providence or something. We see this poster with like five names on it. Not And our name, we're not listed. Why aren't we listed on there? Wait, who's Brush Project? <laughs> <laughs> it was just mishearing things. Yeah. It's the nature of the thing. So let's go back. I just I, I know that you've had to do this yourselves, going on YouTube, listening to your old songs. But 1999 is when the band kind of stopped, right? Yeah. I went to the show in Kitchener. I just found out my sister told me. She saw you in Ottawa last night, by the way. No report yet. I'm, what did it go well? Was your show good? In Ottawa? Were you, yeah, we yeah, 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 it was okay, good. Great. Yeah. I'll check in with her later. Yeah. Apparently... She uh, got. I didn't. I don't remember this. She made a fake ID to go to your Kate <laughs> Park show in '99. Uh, wow! First time she's ever done that. That's anyway, cool. I was at the Kitchener show, and then I think we knew at the time that was it. It was like a farewell tour, right? Yeah. Why was that the it's end? That tent, right in the Kitchener show, it had that. It did yeah, have that it did tent. have a tent. It kind of like the, the, there was stuff. Uh, there's some video footage of that. I have photos yeah. from that yeah. show that yeah. I can send you if you really yeah. want on my uh, that yeah. I developed at the grocery store. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the comet comes and goes, Vish. It does. It just it the was time to wrap it up, yeah. right? And she comes around and she goes again. <laughs> You never know. You never know. But it it, it it sort of run its course at that time, right? It was sort of just like all things lining up. It's kind of stars, you know, all lining up and moving away and whatever. And Y2K shut us down. It was Y2K. We were, the fear of we were, Y2K. We were fearing it, so we had to... But you, you have to, maybe, I don't know if you feel this way. Did you feel like you were at your best as a band around that time or close to it? Because I know you guys were celebrating Clayton Park. That was your last album. Yeah, I mean, and I, you love that album the most, clearly, on some level, or no? Well, I, I mean, <laughs> I know we have fondness for all of it, but that might have been the record that we, I think, you know, we all sort of, uh, I think, it was there the was most a playfulness. Clear, it was a clear, clear vision on it. You know, maybe and the most playful in terms of yeah. us actually getting to understand the studio and to experiment a bit and to, yeah, to kind of hear things that we made up in the studio we were you know we toured a lot we'd come up with those songs on the road touring sweet home record and stuff but when we hit the studio we made there was things like the breakdown of violent dreams where we were hitting like pots and pans or whatever you know they're yeah. just doing stuff that surprised us on album and then went because when we did might not have been allowed a few years before yeah we were allowed bit, yeah. by whom by the rule books of rock and roll at the time by, well by yeah. our rule by the rule yeah. books of us not necessarily <laughs> 
getting into that. You, you know? guys had rules, didn't you? We did. Everyone I, has no shorts rules. on stage. Yeah. That was SOS. One. SOS, SOS, SOS on is a big one. It yeah. sticks with me yeah, all I, the time. I still, I still as an it. MC. I, when yeah. people are like, "Hey, can you MC the festival?" Then I, it's thirty-five degrees Celsius, yeah. and then I go and I change. They're like, "Why are you wearing pants now? You're wearing shorts." <laughs> SOS, I say, yeah. <laughs> can't do it. Just Thresh hermit. Yeah. I think of that all the time. <laughs> so you had rules, and then you outgrew them. It, you got you got loose. You got a little bit looser, and the yeah. song started to sprawl. Yeah. And that was a magical period. And then it was done. And yeah. I felt sad. <laughs> sad. Like yeah. you were hitting your stride. It felt like. So okay, then let's go. Ten years later, two thousand nine. Yeah. I think if we're right, yeah, ten. I think maybe anniversary. Yeah, you think twenty ten. I trust you, Joel. You yeah. you're like an archivist. You I don't remember. know why we said was it ten? Yeah, it was ten. Okay, it was 10. sorry, eleven years. It ten. doesn't quite make yeah. sense now, but yeah. still, what prompted uh, the reunion in twenty ten? Comet uh, came around again. You got to explain <laughs> this comet thing. I don't <laughs> understand. I mean, I, th- I think we'd all, you know, <laughs> for me, I, I can only speak to to my own experience, but for me, the part of the joy of the hermit was the collective experience of it going to places for the first time we grew up together and we saw the states and canada we did a lot of traveling together when we were young and so we grew up a together. lot a lot a of lot, traveling. a lot of traveling for pretty young yeah. you know we, we we hit the road out of high school and so that experience is was was really valuable really fun there's a lot of shared memories there but then at the same time when you get together with your friends you don't want everything to be a nostalgia trip you know a lot of it's going to be as you get older but the I think what I like about this tour and what I liked about that 2010 tour for the same reason was it creates a new set of memories. It's yeah. not like, you know, it's kind of like we get to, um, we've all changed a bit. We've all played in a very other capacities with different people. We have different life experiences, but we come together and we have all these shared memories. Now we have some new ones uh, to kind of add on to. And so it, 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 there's a bit of memory lane, but there's also a, like you're paving a new little piece of memory lane. Well, you guys are you know? basically brothers. Is it fair to say? I mean, would you say that, Ian? Is yeah, that too much? I, <laughs> I, don't have any, I have a sister. I have no brother. These guys are my brothers. I have when did you two? Sister. When did you two meet, Ian and Joel? I'm just curious. 87. 87, and Rob and Ian had known each other since 84. 84. Okay, so yeah. and, and were you? Did you meet because of music? We met f- because of grade four. <laughs> A thing called Grade well, Four. I don't know that band. What band is Grade Four? Super cool. They, that's a good name for a band. Grade Four. <laughs> Have you seen Grade Four? Yeah, <laughs> Chicago. Uh, for grade Four. <laughs> so you just met because you were students in the same school. We were students at Duke and then I, I moved from Lunenburg, and uh, Rob's mother Janet and my mom Sharon went to school together. And that's when right. we moved up from Lunenburg, I knew nobody. But we were moving to Clayton Park, and my mom connected with Janet, and lo and behold, she had a twelve-year-old son, and I was twelve. And so I met Rob. Rob introduced me to Ian and we became fast friends. Okay, so okay. Weird, so. so you got into music together how this this I'm weirdly flashing back to every much music interview you guys did where you've explained these things. I remember I'm thinking am I Sukian Lee right now? I remember well, you explaining my, this. My, my my memory of it, which might not be entirely correct, was that like my dad I had started to play a little music in Lunenburg. Like my dad had offered to teach me guitar, I wasn't interested. I tried drums, that that didn't take, I tried saxophone. Then I got to to, to got to Halifax and then Rob started taking guitar lessons and then so I was like oh Rob's playing guitar dad teach me guitar so we can like so I can play I have something to do. it gives a social motivation for me yeah, I think was funny. really my own I mean I love music and we were all getting into music your but, dad but Bill, was, by the way your but, dad Bill a very accomplished yeah, good guitar player and and, yeah. and, and and so he showed me stuff I borrowed his acoustics started learning stuff and then and then Ian was given a fretless bass by. Was I, well, I think I was just freestyling. You were just singing singing. first because we started our first jam. We have on tape. The first time we ever got together to make noise together, we made this tape called Nabisco Fonzie, and right. that was the name of our band. That's the song. summer between grade seven and eight. Was it that summer? I think maybe eight. Yeah, we've seven. We've done eight. a whole year. Yeah. 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 This goes, it brings me back yeah. to the brothers yeah. thing. You've yeah. been doing something a long, long time. A long time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. 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 So I mean, eventually Nabisco Fonzie turns into Thresh Hermit. Is that well, right? Well, we became grade four after that, yeah. <laughs> and then. Uh-huh. I forgot about <laughs> and grade then the four. hoods, All right? And the then Thrusher. Yeah. I almost got in a car accident trying to take CDs out of that box set you made. Like <laughs> I, did. I was like, I can't get the f- CD out of here, and I'm like, ah, I'm trying to drive. That's I never should have interviewed McGannigan as the first. <laughs> but I bring yeah. up this box set you put out in, I want to say, 2010, 2010 probably. Yeah. yeah, and it's got everything that yeah. you. But, uh, uh, yeah. Does every, it have the stuff uh, you're just yeah, talking yeah. about? So, so it has some excerpts. I, I it was. It's a. Uh, curated a, a loosely curated probably there's a lot of stuff that would get culled now but we we, we let there's a lot of there's there. a lot of madness on there so yeah. we got McGettigan's into film 
You're a Joel. You're a producer. You make records as well. You yeah. do most things yourself. There's some archival stuff going on. When I think of that box set, that Thrushhammer box set that I was just alluding to, few bands would do that. Call through their entire lifespan and and have the mindset to record things. Was that important to you growing well, I, up? I've always, I've always, I'm kind of, I have a lot of, I've saved tapes and archived things. Like I have the reels of Clayton Park at the studio, and you know, at the digitized. I like kind of saving things. What about you, Ian? Uh, uh, I am not an archivist. You don't know where anything is. I worked in the public <laughs> archives for a while, and my I mom's know. of that nature. You okay. know, so I, I tend to hold on me. to things. Uh, so, I, I mean, I wonder if that feeds into the fact that this comet that we keep alluding to comes back. Like, it's a little bit of history, as you say, but it's also something new. I mean, this is important to you to keep Thresher coming back and going a little bit, isn't it? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, again... I think like it's a, also more important to other people. It's not that it's more important, but, like, it's somehow become quite important to a lot of people like people respond to it and it's really nice it means it's through their memories of that record as well you know mm -hmm. so it's kind of whatever Par outside of what it means to us it's it's meaning a lot to other people which is kind of the best part yeah of i would it, say really. like part of what's neat about being able to play it now when you're not sort of wrapped up in forward motion the, necess the necessity of forward motion your livelihood and the idea of like oh we've you know because we're not we're not we're not in the hermit for a living we're out on this reunion tour and we're older and a bit more relaxed about it. I'm able to like watch the audience more and be like, "Wow, there's like people singing along," and and it becomes a, like a, not to say it wasn't joyful back in the day, but we had a lot of the stakes are different. The, the stakes were different, you know. And so this is there's a kind of like uh, it was a movie of the week. <laughs> it feels uh, kind of yeah, it's sort of e e e easier now than it was. You well, know? you guys, I think for some people, you were viewed as a very successful band. But I know from even watching that documentary, Learn to Party, that you'd go to the states or other places and it'd be hit or miss, right? Yeah. yeah sure. So the the kind of the road can be crushing, and I and you guys did so much road work. I mean, like I said, I saw you a bunch in Southern Ontario. You're yeah. from when yeah. I was a teenager, and you're from Halifax. I know how hard. Yeah. In retrospect, that you realize how hard that was. And do you it, look back on that as it's hard, like, it's hard to sustain a living for four people on right. the road. And in the 90s, we were lucky to have a record deal yeah. that basically afforded us a living. And we were, so we were, I mean, I like to think, you know, we, we, we were both lucky and maybe, and, you, and some might say spoiled, but at the same time, we were driven and we chased it. And we took what the opportunities that were But it also us. led us to making a record like Clayton Park, which was yeah. not really super commercial or whatever like to have spent that much time like to be that like together of a band and to make such a non-commercial thing it's like it's only happens by being like funded by outside money you know what i mean because it wasn't necessarily as well we had we but had then been, by, but then the very dropped by then right? yeah and that's I mean, what i mean but it was know? through all that money that <laughs> got us the ability to be well yeah be, to play to that do, much part, part that of it much. because we had those record deals and we toured you know yeah. electra behind you know that that the, the, the sweet home record record with electra tour support and stuff we toured ad nauseum through the states right. playing to nobody right and so we got bored and so we wrote these long riffy songs that we could jam on and that's what morphed into clayton park and as a result we wouldn't have been able to make clayton park had we not had the opportunity to go out and tour and tour and right. tour and some shows were good and some were miserable um but if we if if our if if our livelihood was entirely bankrolled by the money that we were getting in Cincinnati on a Tuesday, we would have <laughs> yeah. broken up in 1994. We made it to 99. Broken yeah. up at the grog yeah. shop in Cleveland. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But my point, I guess, ultimately is you have come, when you've come back, this is the second return, I guess, of Threshermit. You are, what you're saying, Ian, like you're seeing the appreciation for it maybe more than you did at that time, right? More than that, in a di it's different. It's for sure, it's different. You know, it feels more precious it. to fans like me. Like I missed. Unfortunately, I was in Newfoundland or yeah. something when you were doing that 2010 tour, and I yeah. missed it. And I, I thought about it on the plane. I'll be honest with you. Like your yeah. band means a lot to me, so I made a big effort to. Well, that eh, means a lot to me. Like yeah. that, no. that's awesome to hear. And like that, I, that's what we recognize in the audience at night. Like there's people who there's some a couple of gals who came to the shows. Oh. All four East Coast shows and the last two Ottawa. But people are flying six, in from Vancouver. Shows, I mean, people have know? more money now because people are older. But it's like <laughs> your fans are older. Dude, yeah, yeah. They're flying in from Vancouver yeah. and Edmonton, and it's like it's kind of like yeah, wow, it's kind of, amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. So and they're they're like it. This yeah. is a thing that if Rob Benvy was here, we'd have a really interesting conversation about it. I'm sure. But there's an interesting thing that goes on between 
uh, people's memory and nostalgia for their lives when they listen to Thrush Hermit, yeah. and also their appreciation for your band. So that's a we- you must be aware sure, of this weird feeling, sure. right? It's yeah. not just your music. No, it's, it's the bringing feelings them that back. they had, yeah. and the yeah. feelings that they had at the time, and that's what's like part of the pa- package. Yeah, music has a sort of weird time teleporting quality, <laughs> right? And, and you know, and it does that to everybody on some level. You associate songs and yeah. with places or events in your life, and so you know, I think that being able to go out and uh, and there's something I think for people who travel to see the show like I've done that a few times I'm not there's not a lot of things that I, I did not but I, I I flew to Ireland to see a show a couple of years ago to see the Paul Brady and Andy Irvine reunion oh, tour because wow. it's this folk record that's a really important record to me because then my dad turned me on to it and I wanted mm-hmm. to see it and it was like I, I never would have seen it back in the day it's a record from 1979 or something and it was wicked, like, and it was so great to go there. And I was like, kind of tearing up at the show because I felt like I'd come a long way, and I was experiencing this music that, this record that I loved. But you were um, thinking of your dad probably too, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and all and all yeah. those things, and and uh, and and so you know, then you can kind of recognize that same sentiment in people coming to see a rock show with the hermit with a giant neon sign. Like you're, <laughs> you, you know, you're traveling. You know, it's it's all sort of, uh, but. Part of it is, I mean, we wouldn't have signed on if we if it wasn't also if we weren't getting something out of it just on a social level. I think you know, we're, yeah. we're, having, we're having fun playing. What about the music itself, though? Like, you know, it's sort of from a bygone era, but it, you've done something that's obviously feels timeless to people like me. How are you feeling about making like guitar rock in? Oh 2019? my god, it's quite. I mean, <laughs> the, the reference. I mean, I'm so out of the loop in terms of what's relevant now, anyway. But just actually physically doing that kind of music every night is really fun. You know, it's outrageous, oh, nice. you know, from a difference of like what, you know, I normally do or whatever. Just It's re- like, you know, it's insanely loud. Like every night I'm like, this is nuts. <laughs> it's so like bombastic and crazy, but well, you know, it's, it's super it's a, fun. I mean, it's a riffy band and we're digging, all digging They're in. They're super fun it is, songs. It, it, yeah. it, 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 it's playful enough and jammy enough that there's some space to improvise, but it's actually quite structured. I mean, Clayton Park's very there's there's some loose bits on it but it came from a lot of playing and mm-hmm. a lot there's a lot of um arrangement on that record you know and part of what we were trying to do on that record i think was like marry you know this riffy stuff that we liked and then these and then but the, you know the we always cared about words and uh yeah and you know it's funny rob and i were talking the other night oh, i wish uh, he was here uh, yeah <laughs> me too um I love uh, rob. rob and i were talking about it the other night and uh about the idea of like if people walked in just going I, you know oh like oh there's a band playing in town let's go see this Thrush Hermit band as if it were new you know mm-hmm. if you walked into the club not knowing that this music was made in 1999 or something how uh, you'd view it I don't know I mean it's just well, an interesting there, is uh, some ki- there, are there are some, some young people to show that I'm obviously like this you know it could be some of their first like rock out shows my son kind of scene. begged me to bring him to this show just no eight years old just wanted to come oh, so bad well, I'm like no they won't let you in and it's too bad. anyway yeah so yeah no it's resonating with younger people yeah, there's something funny. about it yeah. yeah so I mean this begs the question I'm sure you've gotten it already and I know you've already framed it as it's fun Joel said earlier it's fun to just put the brakes on the creative impulse and kind of play these old songs not think about it what are the odds what are the odds that this <laughs> will spark something though because I have said this to many people on the show uh, who who warrant it, I suppose. There is such a thing. I, b- I believe in band chemistry. I believe in the four people on stage making a particular course, sound yeah. with a particular spirit. Every time someone gets a new bass player, you're like, ah, it's not the same thing. You know, it's somehow it's not. Maybe that's on me. I don't know. Is there ever chatter of like, let's, why don't we see what we can it, do together? It would have, I mean, the the, the, the challenge is, is we're, all, we're all, I mean, we live in two different cities. Yeah. We all are different activities in our lives going on part of it though would have to be you'd have to have the time right and yeah. the material that would m- merit it and i'm you know i'm busy making st- I, I making a record of my own everyone's making music in different capacities and busy it's not to say that it wouldn't happen but you have to have like you have to make space around to do those kinds of things you have to sort of absolutely no no so I it's that. really yeah. hard to know whether that would be possible because a lot of it would have to be like this material would but you're right there is out al- there is like an alchemy i think that comes with four people playing there's like a magic to the hermit that's why i'm enjoying it there's like there's like a a pressure that gets applied 
by everybody that pushes it into places that it doesn't get pushed with other people. It's like you know a grade I mean? four science class come to life. That's exactly right. This is all <laughs> about grade four. Um, you know the science you do in grade four? I don't you think know? you do any science in grade four. But yeah, no, I agree. I believe in that. And I know that's true of you guys. Um, I mean, you must, Ian, you've played on but, Joel's records as well. I mean, But there's also a desire to not like, the, 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 the challenge there is to go like, oh yeah, maybe there'd be something there, but you, what you wouldn't want to do is then do it and go, we don't like this as much. Or, you know, you, you mm. want to make sure that you don't necessarily muck with the magic that existed sure, in the past. Sure. And so That's a risk. Being able, going and playing these songs maybe is a safer bet, but we do it well. And this music actually still, it feels fresh now because we haven't been playing it. I'm not so judging was, you guys. That, this that, was not meant to judge thing. you. Yeah. Yeah. Having not played it every night for the past yeah. 20 years yeah. Yeah. does make it yeah. have a have it. It's kind of like uh, what's you know the guy, who, the amazing singer who died. Mel Torme. Charles, no, Charles Bradley. I just went with seeing Mel him live. That he, uh, you could just tell he didn't have a lifetime of having played that music. Right. And then right. his, Jones his, his well. success yeah. coming so late, or just doing that at, a, at the, he wasn't. He didn't spend 40 years doing it mm -hmm. anyway. That's what that was okay. the magic of seeing him. That's kind of the magic of what's happening. I don't here. mean to pry. Obviously, these things might take their course. I just I'm curious as a fan of yours, and you know, we get it's nice to be asked. Well, we get greedy as fans, don't we? Yeah. Oh, why can't they get back together and do a thing? I worry that we're just being greedy and not. Yeah, know. I mean, but the thing is, is if you get together and don't do it well, uh, then everybody goes, "Oh, they shouldn't have done that." Yeah. <laughs> do you ever do you ever jam though? Uh, when, but you, when you get ready, well, we to jam practice? and sound check every day. Yeah. But you know, on some level, but you know, there's not a not a lot. But of, we haven't yeah. have now, like I said, we haven't all four been in a room until yeah. two days before this tour. We rehearsed for two days and then hit the road. So, you know, it it's it was not easy to get the thing together. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But you know, uh, <laughs> you know, it, 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 I didn't mean to put you I'll on the spot. I'll never say never. Don't but, say uh, never. Don't say never. But I won't say yes. Are you yeah. playing potentially? better than you did in 2010 or 1999 do you feel that someone could argue i uh i, I like think it. so i feel it's like i feel like we're cliff is on fire cliff is on fire yeah. something about stopping and starting again uh when you're a bit older and as a person you're a bit more calm maybe than you were when you were younger keto diet <laughs> so diet is doing keto it diet. The, the, the show feels more uh relaxed and also because we're playing clayton park in order right uh, okay. Which, which uh, I didn't know. I haven't seen a show. Yeah, yet, yeah. Right? So I mean, you know, we're we're so we're doing. There's an encore as well and stuff. But we're playing. People know what's coming. You know, right. once you, the show gets going, everyone's like, if you know the record, you kind of know where it's going. Which is sort of kind of cool, actually, because it means you 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 sort of you can take your time with it. You know, and but it, but I don't know. There's something about it that feels sort of measured in a way that the okay. last tour didn't, uh, which I'm quite enjoying. So this tour wraps up in when Victoria, man, we're going all the way. You're doing the whole thing. I saw that. You're doing yeah. the whole most of the 14th country. or something. Tuesday, whatever Tuesday yeah. is in Victoria. So forgetting what I said about making a new album right away. Sorry to put yeah. that pressure on you guys. Does this potentially mean more activity for this record like for to tour behind Clayton Park I in the new year I don't think so no, no. This, okay. it took a lot to get this together okay. and um, yeah, I mean you know as it's amazing seeing all these folks coming out to yeah. the shows and there's some we've had some really great so a bunch of full houses and stuff but you know even as we go west it's like we're not a super known quantity there's not that many hermit fans there there's a bunch yeah um but it's not like it's not like oh let's go tour australia now because there's a huge demand for it you know like if you're going to go Right. And once you sort of played to every city in Canada, you've sort of you've hit your people. Sure, sure, you, sure. You know, you found yeah. your people. And, and well, I uh, just meant you know summer festivals, these kinds of things. Joel, yeah. you know this for a fact. I mean, that's fun yeah. and, and lucrative, and it can be yeah. fun. And I just want this to happen again. That's cool. all I'm saying. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> yeah. You want me to make some calls? Figure yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You, uh, what's coming up next for both of you? And well, Ian, you're doing film stuff. Yeah. Okay. Nothing to talk about. I'm right hoping now. maybe you'll help me with some mixing on my next. Yeah. Uh, I got to oh, okay. mix this music I'm yeah. working on. And that's what I'm going to do: is get off the road and go back into the studio and try and get a record out for the. Uh, okay. Uh, your own record. Yeah. Emergency or you? Mixed bag. I Mixed thought bag. I saw an Instagram photo of maybe you, maybe Chris Murphy of Sloan, maybe Peter Elkis. Yeah, yeah. The, we did a little. We did one track. Ian was played on that as well. And Ian, yeah. okay. Yeah. So that, that that might was, be for that, this. That's, there's one there, and then there's some stuff. Yeah, it's just a mix. Bag. Okay, JoelPlaskett.com if people want to learn more about. Yeah, you, nothing. There's not, there's nothing to learn about it yet, but maybe in a couple months. I'll have Just to keep to track of your comings yeah. and goings, Ian. Yeah. Do people want to follow you and figure out? what You, you know what's funny? My daughter made me a f 
Instagram account, and I didn't realize this <laughs> until these guys showed me on this tour. And people have been—I don't know anything about that. And then, <laughs> what? Yeah, it's what? Well, does she use your name? Yeah, that's amazing. She's What's on, on there? I don't know. People have been like, they've been like, oh, your Instagram. I'm like, yeah, my Instagram. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> anyway. I think I followed it, actually. Oh, I'm like, oh, I like my guests. This better, will be fun. I better yeah. look at that. Okay. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, can we go out on a Clayton Park song? Like, is that permissible? Go, what, please. What would you pick? What's been really, the, what's been the most fun for you, Ian, on this uh, tour so far? Uh, yeah, geez. Uh, oh, well, Violent Dreams is always a jam every night. I don't know if that's going to be too long for no, you. No, no, there's nothing too long. It's a podcast. You can the, do whatever you want. There you go. Violent Dreams? What is that? Where did that song come from? I, 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 I had a year or two of, uh, but like, sort of dreams like that, but also re I was reading a lot of uh, crime novels like Jim Thompson and these kind of old pulpy crime novels, and I'm sure, and watching film noirs and stuff like you're that you're a big film noir guy yeah I like all that stuff I, I don't know that that was affecting but I did have I did have some I would have a, there was a period where my dreams weren't very good oh. it might have had something to do with that and see. so it, it it sparked that tune a little bit yeah okay yeah. I didn't know yeah. see I didn't yeah. know this stuff Someone, yeah. I, I, I didn't know this stuff at all and I've lived yeah, with this record know, for a long just dreams where you're like being stalked or something those kinds of things oh my god okay something. well let's scare the hell out of everyone it's almost yeah. Halloween this is yeah, fitting let's actually. go alright Violent Dreams by Thresh Hermit from their amazing album uh, Clayton Park Ian Joel thank you so much for Thanks being on my no show problem, man. we'll see you down the road I hope yeah right.
Well, how about that for some value? Two separate interviews on one episode. That was the 502nd episode of Creative Control. Thanks to Shotgun Jimmy. Thanks to Thrush Hermit for making time for me to appear on this 502nd episode of Creative Control, which is part of the Entertainment One Podcast Network and is available on all iOS and Android platforms. And Spotify, YouTube, Audio Boom, all sorts of other things as well. If you're looking for an episode of this show and you can't find it on any of those things, or if you want to learn more about me and sign up for my semi regularly scheduled newsletter, please visit my website, vishkana.com. You can like Creative Control on Facebook, follow the show on Twitter at Vish Creative, or follow me directly at Vishkana. Listen to a radio show version of Creative Control on Wednesdays at noon Eastern Standard Time around the world at cfru.ca or on an actual radio at 93.3 FM if you're in or near Guelph. Also, please visit patreon.com slash creative control to make a flexible monthly donation to keep this podcast going. And just a reminder, there's a new $6 tier for exclusive content. You can learn more about all of that at patreon.com slash creative control. Thanks again to Pizza Trocadero, The Bookshelf, Planet Bean Coffee, and Granddad's Donuts for their in-kind support for this show. Thanks to Jim Guthrie, uh, as always, for letting me use music on the show. You can learn more about Jim at jimguthrie.org. And finally, thank you for listening to this program and subscribing to this podcast and telling your friends to do the same. I almost got choked up there. It means a lot, and I appreciate it, and I will keep making shows for as long as you think it's okay for me to do so. So thanks, and I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.